Welcome viewers to the series, Exploring Careers in Innovation. This episode is entitled, The Technical Side, Building a Digital Product, Managing a Product and Engineering Team. My name is Jason Schneiderman. And I'm a member of the class of 2023 at Middlebury College. I'm a major in economics with minors in math and political science. I would like to introduce this episode's guest speakers, Brian Serkia and Nima Aldaust. Brian is a member of the class of 2012.5 and is the co-founder and chief Te technology officer of Lately. Nima is a member of the class of 2008 and was the VP of product and strategy at Rigetti Computing until recently. He is now the CEO of a new company that works, that is working on quantum simulation of materials. Welcome and thank you for joining us, Brian and Nima. This episode focuses on what is involved in building a digital product and the team, balancing product management and engineering. I'll start with Nima. Could you tell us a little bit about your organization and what you do in your role? Sounds good. Uh, again, great to be here. Thanks a lot for, for organizing this, uh, Jason. Um, the organization I work in is basically a small uh, technology oriented company. Uh, we are building a, a platform for simulating uh, materials on a computer and basically understanding what their properties are and predicting more importantly what the properties are before we go and synthesize them in the lab. Like if you have a drug, you wanna make sure that it actually does the thing that you, you hope it does, which is curing a disease. Uh, you simulate it on, on a computer uh, before, you can, before you go and do the expensive process of synthesizing it in the lab. Um, that, that's the product we're building. Uh, my role is the CEO of the company. And uh, uh, at the moment, the, most of the work that I'm doing right now is uh, to, uh, to harden our product roadmap, uh, to, to make sure that our engineering milestones are actually fit into the product side and business development aspects and, um, and uh, capital raise aspects as well are under my pick. And uh, what would you find most challenging in this role probably? Um, I guess uh, the first one is uh, making sure that what you are building uh, is actually valuable for people. Um, people care about it and they wanna use it. Um, the second one is motivating people to do things that have never been done uh, and, and basically stretching themselves and um, inspiring them to, to accomplish uh, um, and invent new things uh, every day. Great. Uh, we'll go to Brian next. Uh, could you tell us about the same about your organization and what you do in your role? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so lately is a marketing AI, AI so artificial intelligence platform. Uh, kind of our core product is uh, taking all of your existing social media content and all of the analytics and essentially for each one of our customers will kind of will basically build a model to try and learn the uh, the kind of tone of voice and what type of content will perform best on all of your social media channels and essentially being able to then take uh, existing content you have like a blog post or a video and actually create for you um, social media content to um, to, to, that you can then edit, that our customers can then edit and, and run. And so and we'll also kind of do a similar model with um, scheduling, figuring out what the optimal times to post each uh, you know, piece of social media content is. And uh, we do a lot of other kind of marketing resource management kind of around that, that kind of core product. And so the mission really is to, uh, you know, what marketers really enjoy doing is, you know, coming up with innovative campaigns and ideas and events and not so much than doing all of the like emails and social media content to kind of promote them. It can be uh, a bit tedious to create, you know, a hundred tweets, you know, to promote an upcoming event. And so we try to take as much of the um, kind of hard yards out of that as, as possible, um, you know, particularly through, uh, through AI and a lot of the kind of innovation that's been happening around uh, natural language processing and, you know, the GPT-3 made news recently of, how it's able to type things for people. And so uh, we've been working with uh, OpenAI as well. Um, and so, yeah, within, within Lightly, I'm the uh, chief technology officer, the, the CTO and, and one of the founders from um, previously 2015 when we, when we got this rolling. Um, and so my job is really kind of managing the um, engineering team uh, prim primarily now. You know, early days, it was really doing everything, helping out with, uh, you know, trying to identify what, functionality and what features people would be most interested in, making sure we're, we're testing that, trying to, you know, really doing a lot of the kind of software development. You know, myself, early on, it was 100%, you know, me actually writing the code. And then as we've grown, of course, I'm doing less and less of that and uh, more more code review and uh, kind of strategic thinking and, and, and that 
type of uh, that type of work. Could you expand a little upon what it was like being a co-founder and really built helping build lately from the ground up? Yeah, absolutely. It was a uh, it was a really fun uh, and interesting process. And so one thing um, that that made it interesting was the the CEO and, and kind of main founder Kate. Uh, she had run a marketing agency and she worked with you know really big clients like Walmart and United Way and. The idea for Lately basically came about when uh, one of our other founders um, met with her and she showed him this insane spreadsheet, like Google Doc, that she used to basically manage all of the like marketing content um, for for these really big companies and thinking like, it's crazy that this is the best you know solution you've arrived at. And there must be other marketers that are just using, you know, sp spreadsheets are really powerful. Like I don't want to knock them. They're, they're versatile and, and great product. Um, and, so, and so that was really, you know, helpful with, uh, with lately was having Kate, this, you know, amazing domain expert and just saying, okay, she has obviously, you know, she has a successful product, right. Which is her agency and she knows who the customers are, you know, what they care about, how to reach them. And so just saying, okay, let's do all the stuff she's doing now and just build that into a, a software platform. Um, and so that was really kind of my, my mission was to, uh, you know, figure out how to translate that. And, uh, we have a, I had a product kind of doing design. And so really early on, it was uh, just the three of us kind of whiteboarding up screens and trying to figure out all the different, you know, uh, kind of roles that Kate would do for these companies and what's the most, the kind of highest impact, lowest effort things we could build first to really try and iterate and get things out there since it, uh, it's been my experience at least that it's pretty shocking how much, I guess, code and product you end up sunsetting or throwing out just because you you build this whole thing and you think i can see why this is going to be really helpful and then you launch it and just nobody cares or uses it right so that kind of process of, of iterating quickly and sort of uh you know perfect is the enemy of good so it's it's better to have something done in three weeks that people can at least use and show you if they care about it first you know three months and it really is a the perfect feature but then nobody uses it those extra two and a half months you spent on it really didn't, didn't work out great. So that was the main kind of, you know, learning process early on was we just need to give it our best shot, fire it up there and kind of our customers will let us know if we did a good job or not, not trying to spend too much time bogged down in the, you know, whether or not hypothetically, you know, that somebody, somebody might use this. Um, and so, yeah, it's been, and it's been fun to kind of go along the ride as we have had, you know, more customers and, you know, people actually, you know, paying us for the product, which is essentially where my previous startup failed is actually, you know, paying users and, uh, and yeah, kind of growing the, the team and, uh, you know, transitioning less into the kind of day to day coming up with product ideas and, and actually building them to now, you know, making sure everyone's busy and productive on the, on the engineering team. Great. Makes sense. Uh, and, uh, thank you both for sharing these insights. Uh, I am a little curious about your own experiences from campus to career. So Nima, you majored in physics and classics at mid. Could you tell us the rest of your story? Sure. Uh, so uh, the kind of physics I did in, at Middlebury, uh, I actually did research with Noah Graham, with, uh, uh, with a team at MIT. Uh, it was a very esoteric kind of physics. It was, we were, uh, we were studying early universe. I loved it. It, it, it really made uh, uh, it, it made a lot of sense intellectually to actually work on those kinds of things. But honestly, the kind of the, 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 it, it didn't really open door for uh, for things that that go beyond academia uh, for for somebody who's working on them. So with uh, with the help of folks, with the very professors uh, Jeff Dunham, Noah Graham, Rich Watson, uh, Steve Radcliffe, I actually started to carve out an alternative path beyond Middlebury. Where I actually, uh, I, when I went when I went to grad school, I started focusing on, uh, on 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 the kinds of interdisciplinary research that can actually be applied in science as well. Um, it was um, I started working on this this thing that I'm working on right now is the quantum simulation of materials. How can we use computers to, to simulate and uh, predict the behavior of materials? So when I was, uh, it, it was a transition, honestly. Um, a lot of the foundations in physics that I knew. Uh, there, of course, they, they of course were the same foundations as the work that I was doing, but the way of thinking, the the domain in which I was applying that kind of knowledge, um, it was uh, it was vastly different. So it it really was uh, that was a 
it, it took a lot of time and effort for me to, to make that pivot in grad school. Um, then uh, after I, what, when I got my PhD, I ended up actually uh, leaving research uh, towards the same direction I was thinking about going before that, you know, gradually leaving research and actually applying the, my, my learnings to, to something that's a little more applicable. I joined McKinsey uh, in, the, in the strategy uh, practice and I was prim primarily working on uh, tech enabled innovation um, and using emerging technology uh, in order to come up with new products for uh, in, typically in bigger, uh, in bigger companies, Fortune 500 companies. Um, and the industries I was working with was chemical industries, renewable energy industries, which were the kinds of things that I, I had touched on when I was in grad school. Um, so it was a good transition. Honestly, the reason I went to McKinsey, it was because at the time I didn't have a very clear idea of uh, um, if, when I'm, I'm leaving research, what exactly I should be applying my, my expertise in. Um, so it was more of a, um, a transitionary, tra transitionary states, you know, where I, where I went there to pick up some uh, business background to get some experience in an actual industry. And it would give me a little bit of time to think through, you know, what I want to do afterwards. Um, that helped me uh, uh, figure out that I want to actually go to early stage ventures. I joined Rigetti at that time, you know, the kinds of work I was doing in my PhD had become much more mainstream over the few years I was at McKinsey. Um, I joined them to lead product and strategy. And after that, I have joined this new company uh, as, as the CEO of the company. So generally speaking, came from a very te technical background, went very deep in it, realized I didn't really want to do research, um, used McKinsey as some kind of a pathway to join the business world. And then I started doing uh, more on the, uh, focusing more on the, on the strategy, business and product side, but on things that are co connected to my technical background. That was uh, the general overview. <laughs> uh, also, just uh, uh, to learn more about your transition from Middlebury to uh, graduate school and the process mm -hmm. of applying and actually getting in, if you could expand on that. Sure. Uh, to be honest, uh, grad, school, grad schools typically care uh, more than anything about your academic track record. And they also care about whether you have demonstrated some research cap uh, capabilities, uh, the ability to do research, to, do, to be inquisitive, and generally to have an interest in doing that. Um, so um, I, think I knew I wanted to go to grad school, I think, uh, from early on. That was, that was my, my plan. So the, the major things that helped me was uh, uh, making that known to my, my, to my professors, the people I mentioned. Uh, and they helped out, you know, with, uh, uh, with uh, basically telling me what kinds of things I should be preparing for, what kinds of things I should start thinking about from early on. And those things had to do with, at the time, like standardized tests that you would go to grad school, they really mattered for them. For some reason, I don't know why it, why it matters for them. It matters for them a lot. Um, it matters a lot, you know, what kinds of courses you take, uh, number of advanced courses you take, some independent studies that they helped me craft in order to be prepared for um, prepared for grad school because a lot of people who in bigger universities they take courses in grad level but then he at, at Middlebury we managed to actually do that through independent studies with professors um, and summer research um, I, I did two uh, two research projects in two summers with Noah Graham at, at the physics department which was incredible it really set me up uh, for success and then on my third year in, in my junior like between my my junior and senior year I did an internship at an institute in Princeton uh, which actually introduced me to the folks that I wanted to work with in my grad school eventually. So doing this kind of research experiences, going to other places to do these kinds of research experiences, and also making sure that academically you are well set up and well prepared for those standardized tests, tests and also having taken the right courses. I think that's what prepares you for grad school. Um, it's a very straightforward path compared to a lot of other ones, um, I must say. Yeah. Great. Uh, so, Brian, could you tell us about your experience from campus to career after studying economics, computer science, and philosophy? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I majored in uh, econ and ended up having a, a minor in philosophy and a minor in computer science. And it was a bit of an interesting, you know, path getting there. Like I, I think, um, at least back in, you know, 2008, I was kind of the typical, not exactly sure what I was interested in. I had done some, you know, philosophy in, in high school and 
was kind of aware as economics of being like the business sort of degree. And it's like, oh, business is, you know, I'm interested in that money seems, you know, like a helpful thing to have. So, you know, I'm going to focus on that. And, uh, and, and you know, I, I really enjoyed my, uh, all my economics classes and the, the professors there were, were amazing and kind of somewhat through econ got really interested in um, the, so, some of the more sort of startup, you know, focused classes. Um, not exactly that mid-core or startup focus, but you do get exposure to, to a lot of different things and, and meet, uh, you know, alumni who are, who are entrepreneurs. And so really that kind of made me fall in love with the whole starting a business, you know, startup, uh, you know, potential, the, um, the kind of freedom and, and upside you have to, to kind of identify problems and work on them was, was something I really wanted to, to kind of have a go at. And, you know, initially really thought I'd, kind of have the somewhat naive you know at the time opinion that i could kind of be the business guy and i'd like find someone who's technical to like build whatever i wanted built and i'll be the visionary you know businessman kind of thing and kind of as i got rolling down that uh realized that's that's pretty tough to do when you're you know a, a sophomore in in college and it's it's tough to just you know convince someone to build something for you that you're not going to pay them for and it's uh it's not going to be uh um particularly easy to to raise money and so kind of figured I should at least give kind of software development and, and programming a try. And so I think when I was a junior, I took my first, first uh, just intro to, to computer science class and then really fell in love with it. Um, just the, um, like even a lot of the more theoretical and, you know, algorithms and, and that kind of thing, I, I really enjoyed it a lot. So essentially just stopped taking other, you know, classes like and was just doing two or three computer science classes a semester to, see if I could get to a major. And um, so that's where kind of ended up computer science came from, you know, uh, way behind to, to come up to uh, uh, into the into a minor. Um, so anyway, that, uh, you know, that was my kind of academic experience and, and kind of throughout that um, started a uh, kind of Craigslist competitor um, startup and actually got a, a Middlebury grant. Um, at the time, it was called the, the Stonehenge competition, which is essentially a, a shark tank, shark tank style kind of demo day pitch and you'd get a, a $3,000, you know, grant to kind of help build your business. And so I stayed on campus between my uh, sophomore and junior year and, and worked on that. Um, and then kind of kept, kept building it, focused on, raised, uh, raised some money. I'm focused on that basically full time with uh, two other um, Middlebury uh, alumni. Um, we, we all started when we were uh, students together and, and moved, moved up to, uh, to Burlington and uh, had a, had a pretty nice office on, on Church Street and, and really focused on that. Um, and, and yeah, so that was a, a really fun experience as I kind of alluded to earlier, uh, things fizzled out a bit when uh, we just, we realized we had a lot more fun kind of building the product and actually going out and selling it and, and marketing it. Like that was where we were all, I think, you know, three smart engineering focused friends and then nine of us were really the sales kind of, uh, you know, marketing um, wizards that maybe we, we sort of have the, if we build it, they will come sort of mindset, which I think can be, can be pretty uh, common, you know, especially among like engineering focused uh, founders. And so um, an investor in, in that startup, um, he kind of saw that things were going, you know, really basically just fine and kind of just uh, potting along. And he was the one who met Kate, uh, the other lately uh, founder. And he basically said, look, this, uh, this woman, Kate, has an amazing amount of domain expertise. She's already raised $300,000 from angels. They need a CTO to, or we need a CTO to basically build, you know, build this product or are interested. And for, for me, that was a, a, a no-brainer to, to move to, uh, to New York City and, and join this kind of awesome team that's, that's funded. And we're in, a, uh, in, a, in an accelerator called uh, ERA in, in New York. So there's this cool office space with all these other startups. Um, and so, yeah, that's... Uh, that's kind of how I kind of landed in the in the startup thing, really just uh, various kind of courses and, and meeting, um, you know, uh, meeting people at, at Millbury, like alumni who are entrepreneurs. There was uh, one economics class I took that paired just local entrepreneurs up with students. And you would basically on a Tuesday, you know, learn from the professor, you know, how to build a pitch deck, how to think about sales and marketing. And then on the Thursday, you'd meet with the local entrepreneur and try to apply whatever you learned to help them with that business. And so uh, the entrepreneur that I got paired up with then 
was one of the investors in that first startup I did and is now a co-founder with me at Lately, actually. And so that's really what kind of started it all was uh, this, this class I happened to take and entrepreneur I happened to get uh, matched up with. Nice. Uh, thank you both for sharing your experiences. Uh, given your experiences and what you know now, what advice do you think you could give to current students to best prepare them for entry points into early stage ventures? I know you, you guys, uh, you like uh, either one of you, uh, I guess we could start with Brian this time, but uh, I know you both went sure. into it a little bit, but uh, obviously hindsight is twenty twenty. just if there's anything you would have done differently or what you'd emphasize from your story that others should do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I think the, that, you know, if, if the, if your goal is, you know, specifically to say, you know, start, you know, a company, I think, one thing I really discounted uh, early on was the the value of essentially domain expertise. And as a sophomore in college, I really wasn't an expert of, of anything, but figured my, you know, my like product genius would somehow make up for that. And uh, that, you know, it's possible for some, but it's, it's pretty few and far between, you know, of people who can, who can make it on that. And so, um, you know, I think finding, and that comes along with finding an amazing team and, and you know, people that you really uh, like, like working with. And so, for the um you know right into starting a startup that's going to be the biggest you know thing to figure out is the you know what problem are you you know trying to tackle and who on the team is an expert in, in solving that problem and kind of finding that team um i think in in more of the you know the nuts and bolts while you're um you know while you're still a student i think uh you know really beginning to you just you know try different things and you know be open to you know different types of internships whether it's um you know if you want to be on the on the software development side just you know kind of picking something that you want to build and you're in you know some all that spare time you get while you're at middlebury but uh you know getting some just getting as many reps in as you can um and and getting a sense of you know is this the type of thing i actually enjoy um what are some of the gaps in my knowledge that um you know, the, that I can either pick up through, you know, courses at Middlebury or by, you know, learning from, from other alumni. So I think, uh, you know, as, as early as possible, um, you know, trying, starting to, uh, you know, work on those sorts of side projects and really, um, really, I guess what I'm saying is like trying to, you know, do as much as, as possible rather than kind of thinking about it or, or making plans, like really kind of get out and get out there and, and giving it a go. Um, and, uh, and so, yeah, I think that that, that would be my my main piece of advice, and you know, somewhat contradictory, really, like not worrying about it too much. Like this is sort of, even though you know, I have only been out of Middlebury for for eight years, it's uh, it's definitely that's the time to do interesting stuff like philosophy and you know, classics and poetry and and that kind of thing. You know, you have the rest of your life to kind of focus on career, and so this is somewhat you know, old man on the porch shaking his fist, but um, the that, you know, I think I was so into a lot of entrepreneurship and startup stuff that I, I do wish I could somewhat go back and, you know, take a bit of a, of a deep breath and, and do, you know, other things that I, I enjoyed a bit more. Great, makes sense. Uh, I'll go to Nima next, uh, just uh, about any advice you'd give students uh, to best prepare themselves for entry into early stage ventures. Uh, um, I think Brian put it really well. I, I think I agree with uh, almost everything Brian, Brian said. Just to build up on, on some of the things that he said, I think going to early stage venture in order to be valuable, um, I think you need really, you, you have to have one of the three things uh, that one is functional expertise, uh, the other one is domain expertise or technical expertise. And honestly, I think in order to day one hit the road and, and start running, I think this is one well, you have to have one of these at least because you can't a generalist, somebody who just is able to communicate or synthesize, etc. It's extremely valuable. But if you don't have one of those, you can't actually be very focused and, and, and basically start doing the work since the beginning. So um, I think entering early stage venture, whether as a founder, uh, Brian has had a lot more experience with that than, than me, but whether as a founder or as, as a person who is joining a team that's already running, I think having one of these three is very important. Getting the domain expertise and the functional expertise, and by functional, by the way, I mean product, marketing, business development stuff, 
getting that in college, in my opinion, is very difficult. I think that, that is something that you can't, uh, that, that a lot of times comes with experience, a lot of time comes with mentorship of people who are already doing that kind of work and they're, they're very good at it. The engineering aspect, on the other hand, or the technical uh, expertise as aspect, I think that is something that you see a lot more uh, younger uh, engineers, a lot more uh, software engineers who are right out of college, who actually can, can start working on, uh, can join a company early stage venture or even found the company together with people like Brian, with, with, you know, people who have domain expertise or, or other functional expertise that can actually start you know, being in the early stage venture since, since day one. So if you actually you know you wanna be in venture and you wanna go right away and start doing things, the the best bet you can actually make is to to become a little more well versed technically and in, in the kind of domain that you want to go into and more importantly partner with people who have those kind of domain and functional expertise now if uh, if uh, the technical aspect is not your cup of tea which is absolutely fair um in order to to go to early stage then start investing in getting your uh, getting exposure to those functional uh, areas or domain areas that i was talking about and by that, I don't mean just reading, reading about them and understanding them is great, but um, I think it actually means that uh, become an apprentice, you know, like go and do the deed in order to learn it. Uh, go to maybe a bigger company for a couple of years, uh, work as a product manager, or go to a smaller company, but make sure that the person who is who's going to be your mentor, the people who are going to be there, they, they actually have a good track record of building these things so that you can learn from them. They are not trivial things. I think Brian mentioned that as well. Um, be, being a visionary and building uh, products that go on and, and going and marketing them, they're not, we, a lot of times we, 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 we tend to discount them, but they actually are complicated stuff. And uh, exposing yourself to the people who are doing that well, uh, and then maybe becoming functional experts that then go and do, do your own business, I think is going to pay off. Um, uh, generally speaking, for me, the thing that actually helped a lot uh, in, at, at uh, in grad school, because when I was at Middlebury, I didn't have entrepreneurial kind of uh, uh, aspirations. In grad school, I think the thing that helped, uh, helped the most was, uh, was, was the technology aspect. But then later in life, when I was at Rigetti Computing, my previous job where I was head of product, actually learning the product side from the people who, were, uh, who, who knew it much better than me, I think that th was the thing that paid, uh, paid off the most. So yeah, uh, either invest in the engineering and technical side or try to get exposure on the functional or domain expertise side. Great. Uh, Nima and Brian, thank you once again for your engagement with us in helping students to prepare for their first career destinations. Absolutely. Yeah. Hopefully it's helpful. Glad to have you here. Thanks a lot for arranging it. Uh, this concludes this episode within the series Exploring Careers in Innovation. In closing, I want to encourage viewers to tune in to get career perspectives and advice from a number of professionals in a broad variety of organizations in our other episodes in this series. I also want to encourage you to tune in to the other MidVantage series, which can be accessed through the events and programs tab on the CCI website. Thank you again for watching.